Hello everybody, welcome back for a permaculture type Thursday video here. Um, as you're aware, I'm a firm believer of you know working with nature, using the land to get the most out of it you can. I wanna show you what Fuzzy's doing uh, really quickly before we get started on what I'm doing today. So we've got all these bits of scrap lumber that uh, were kind of given to us or left on the property by the previous tenants. So Fuzzy has been making himself quite the um, outdoor play park. It doesn't look like much here in the second driveway. But I'll show you what's going on in the back here really quick. Oh, actually, here you go. Demonstrate for us what you've been doing, Mr. Fuzzy. He's having way too much fun. I have warned him sooner or later when he's not here, I'm going to steal his bike and play with his track. But um, if I do that, I'll probably put that up on the outdoor channel because after all, that's outdoor. So yeah, what I'm doing today, however, is um, well, we're ravaging that Saskatoon berry collection we've got up front because the birds are getting into it. We've got a really heavy storm that came through last night, knocked a lot of them off, and we're basically expecting more of that behavior from the weather today. You can see the skyscape behind me, not the clear blue sky that we've been seeing so much of lately. So let's go take a look at the Saskatoon berry bu bushes. I got some big bowls here to fill, and uh, yes, let's see <laughs> if we can fill those up. All right. Ah, uh, how I do love these Saskatoon berries. The riper they get, the easier they fall, which makes them really easy to pick because, you know, if it comes off with a bit of gentle pressure, then great. But between the wind and the rain, there's a lot of them in the ground. The upside to that, though, is next year there'll be a whole bunch more Saskatoon berry bushes sprouting up. There are every year. As you know, I'm a firm believer of purchasing things in the off-season. Shocks found this last year end of season apparently it's supposed to be for oh look at that That's picking berries I've never used something like that before and it's a little bit savage on the ones that don't want to come so I guess I'll leave her to play with this and I'm gonna do it old-fashioned way because I like picking berries one for the bowl two for the mouth one for the bowl two for the mouth so while picking the berries on the bush I have encountered this one here which looks distinctly different from um, everything else growing on the same branch. You know, there's a lot of bird ravage stuff on here, but this one, any of you more experienced service berry, Saskatoon berry, June berry growers, if you know what's going on there, I'd love some information on that. Is this the one I should be planting, perhaps, you know? I just don't know. But I know I'm addicted to these berries, and the bulls are filling up nicely. Well, mine is anyway. I think Shocks might be eating more of hers, but... I just ate the first one. can blame a person? Just ate the first one. Uh -huh. I eat the first one from every one I pick. So here we have the combined total for today's harvest. I'm betting that's going to be well over a kilogram. Lazzy, what's your problem, bro? I know you like Saskatoon berries, too. Just chill out. Tied yourself up against the tree. Did it to yourself, buddy. Anyway, so I think I'm going to turn this into some good sugar-free Saskatoon berry jam. We'll undoubtedly end up using that for tart filling and all kinds of stuff. But, mmm, do you love these Saskatoons? So here we have our Saskatoon berry harvest, lightly rinsed, drained out a little bit. Do do do. let's find out what this weighs. So we'll gently pour that in there because the bowl is very delicately balanced. Maybe Shocks could help me balance that bowl. All right. Yay for a gentle woman's touch and 112 grams, 111. So again, or 1,011. Yes, there's a zero in there, 1,011 grams. So we broke a kilo again. That is sweet. That definitely, I think that puts us to five kilos so far this year. So that is not bad. Times what, 2.2, so 10, 11 pounds of food so far. My goal was only like, a hundred, so... 2.2 pounds in one kilo. Yeah. Right. Okay. Alright. So I guess our actual total is 4,837 marked harvested grams at this point. So 454 is a pound. So that's 10 plus change pounds so far this year. It's only in July. My printing is terrible, I know, but whatever. This is all hastily recorded stuff. Because as silly as it may seem, one of my long-term goals is to harvest as many pounds of food as this property cost us in dollars. Uh, preferably in less time than it would take a normal person to pay off a mortgage. So, yeah, we'll see. You know, it might, it might happen. 
Well, that is a delightful harvest of Saskatoon berries that I've already got going in there. I think we're going to grab the rest of these currants today. We'll drop a few along the garden way here. See if anything sprouts for next year, but add a little bit of tart to that Saskatoon berry, uh, well, jam, I guess. It's going to be tart filling, it's going to be pie filling, it's going to be jam, it's going to be lots of things. But the initial goal, starting off with jam. Anyway, I have officially advised shocks that odds are very good. This IBC tote um, is going to be converted into a biogas reactor, digester, generator. Ah, you can find a, a lot of different videos if you change your search terms just a little bit. Ultimately, it's all the same thing though. It's a fake stomach. So, yes. Not going to be the first conversion project though. However, that is the one I'm hoping to use this for, maybe, potentially. This is going to be the first little tiny biogas digester that I make. It's based on a design I saw from some kids in the Pakistan Science Club. And, uh, yeah, theirs seemed to work. I see no reason mine wouldn't if I follow suit. And I can write down to, well, let's face it, I live in the prairies. I can find fresh cow dung to start this sucker up with, even though I don't have cows. This kind of looks like it, but this is my first attempt to try and uh, chop grass with that meat grinder. Didn't go well. Um, worked out more as a juicer, so I don't think that's quite where I want to go. But I have a few ideas there, too. Anyway, this is going to get converted. It's going to be interesting. That project will be on the, my small farm channel, because it's only slightly gardening related. As Punky pointed out, all of this stuff is kind of homestead related, but um, yeah, I don't know. It is what it is. I am totally fixated right now on the biogas idea though, because I think I have found a free way to heat the greenhouse and therefore keep my fish alive and therefore get back to growing in an aquaponic greenhouse 12 months a year, which is, you know, the challenge level is right up there. I live in Manitoba. I know what I'm dealing with. I've got at least on average eight months where I am looking at snow and yet I intend to grow for 12 months a year. I like to make sure the challenge level is set, you know. So, if I can even get eight months of growing out of there, I'm doing pretty good. But if I can get a free source of heat, and like I found a couple things that uh, give you a calculation of how much gas you can expect produced by how much raw material, like fresh lawn clippings, for example, will produce X, whereas cow dung will produce like about half of X. But it's not really fresh lawn clippings anymore by the time the cow's done with it, is it? So, yeah. It's very interesting. Kitchen scraps apparently ripping full of the kind of things that one of these things want. Hog waste apparently is a really fast fuel. Goes through there, you know, in about half the time, apparently. Apparently. Haven't tested any of this stuff yet, right? But there are plenty of hog barns around. Not quite sure what they do with their waste, but there's bound to be a way to get uh, my hands on some of it and, you know... This is kind of like a green energy thing, so there might be some long-term potential uh, business developments to be considered, especially with the um, council member plans and aspirations and all that stuff. So, yes, I think that is where I'm going to wrap up our Thursday look. It's kind of permaculture-y. It is what it is. I hope you enjoyed uh, hanging out for a little bit today, and I appreciate you spending a little bit of your time with me. I always do. Feel free to throw... Uh, Anything polite you feel like in the comments below, if you've got uh, less than polite comments, you know, well, keep them to yourself. Go scream them at a tree, but there's no point in putting them below because I'll just delete them if they come up. So it is what it is. All right, everybody, tomorrow I'm hoping to take a look at the chili peppers, but we will see because that is definitely a weather permitting thing. But yeah, I would definitely like some feedback on what's going on with the Ahia Hujapan because something's, something's not quite right. All right, so yes, I hope to see you tomorrow.